Good afternoon, Coach Hall. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. You? Good, real good. We're on uh, your home court. It's a uh, fitting setting. Um, you know, you won your last uh, five games in a row, and four of them have been on this court. Mm -hmm. um, so how's it feel to be on a, a longer winning streak after, you know, you actually went on a five-game losing streak earlier yeah. this year, but, you know, you won two, lost two, stuff like that. But how's it feel to um, get your team going on a five-game winning streak? Sure. Well, I prefer the five-game winning streak to the five-game losing streak. It, uh, it, it is more fun. Um, we've, we've played some pretty good basketball. The girls are having some fun. Um, you know, we've had some good, really competitive games. Um, it's been fortunate that we've been at home because that's been definitely to our advantage and then able to get one road win on Tuesday. So um, it's fun, kind of fun to get things on a roll a little bit, uh, practice a little bit more lively, uh, and it, you know, it's just more enjoyable when you can come out ahead sometimes. I've noticed that some of your players are maybe not contributing more than they used to, but it's showing up more in the box score. Like Allison Johnson is scoring more or... You know, Tanya Dickey seems to be scoring more things like that. Is all is that all part of the system, or is it just who's hot that night? Well, yeah, they're they're just they're good players and they're making plays and they're starting to figure out, you know, how to how to score and what we're trying to do. Tanya, especially, I think, has done a she's done a really good job of making some adjustments and and finding some open shots and she's moved the ball really well. She's just played really well lately, and that's been a big part of our success. Allison too. Um, you know, she's been pretty consistent throughout the whole year. I'd say if we have one steady rock person, it's probably Allison. And, um, you know, she's had nights where she's um, contributed more than others, but she just does whatever we ask her to do on that night. And um, she's done a nice job of being steady. And it's good to see her have some success here. How, how would you say the uh, post game is fitting into your system right now? Because a lot of your, I wouldn't say the main part of your wins have come off the perimeter shooting but a lot of your offense is coming from the jump shots or you know, from those points in the paint that may be a little closer to the free throw line. Sure. Talk a little bit about how um, people like Megan Myrie and your, your taller players, bigger players, are still a part of that system and involved in the sure. scoring process. Well, I think the biggest change we've made since we've had a little bit more success is that the ball has gone to the post, and that means it doesn't necessarily always mean that we're scoring it from there, but when it goes there, it collapses the defense, and that's a big key for us is to try to get the ball there, whether it be dribble penetration or um, passing the ball into the post. And, and Megan's such a talented player, and she's such a good passer for a post player that she, um, you know, we, we've tried to get her to rein it in a little bit because she's passing almost too much now, where we need her to continue to look to score because she is a good scorer in there, and we're hoping that she's going to continue to do that. But um, So everything offensively key for us is... is you know, important that we get the ball to the post and a, a collapse the defense and opens up things for other people. It's pretty interesting that you noted that Megan Myrie, who's your tallest player, you know, your um, most prolific scorer under the hoop from a post position, is second on your team in assists. Um, so heading into this weekend, you've got College of St. Scholastica tomorrow um, in Duluth, and then you head to Northland College on Saturday. And both of those contests, uh, that's the, you're in the second swing of your UMAC uh, double round robin schedule now. Mm -hmm. And both of those contests here in the Erickson Center were, were close games. Um, what do you make of those? How will you transition from um, things that you want to change from those games into this weekend's contest? Well, starting for us, you know, we just got our first road run of the year on Tuesday, so we need to work and focus on playing better basketball on the road. And, and that means for us limiting our turnovers, which we're able to do a little bit better at home, and then shooting the ball well from the perimeter. If we do those things, then you know we have a chance to, to be successful, and we haven't done those things as well on the road. So uh, we're going to focus on doing that. We're going to keep trying to do the things that um, – you know that worked for us the first time. See if we can improve on them a little bit. Those are two good teams. They're, you know, they're fighting for playoff position um, with us and with others. So I know it'll be uh, an emotional weekend and a, and a weekend that everybody's going to try to, you know, come out with some wins. So we're looking forward to the challenge, and um, we'll see what we can do this weekend. Before we go, uh, wanted to ask you a little off the court uh, question, maybe or away from the statistics. Uh, so I wanted to ask, who are your coaching influences in life? And I mean, males, females whoever, who, who uh, impacted where you're at today? Well, a lot of people impacted where I'm at today, but you know, as far as coaching influences, I guess I'd probably start with my dad. Uh, my dad was a high school coach, not really when I was um, coaching. You know, I don't remember a lot about it, but he, you know, he, was, he, he was an influence on me. He just has a way of, of inspiring people that I guess I've, I've picked up on and um, you know, enjoyed, and he always coached my teams and things like that. So I'd, I'd say it'd start with my dad and then uh, coaches that I've worked under, I've had so many good coaches that I've worked with or under. Uh, started with Coach Mark Hansen, who was my 
um, my college coach, and then I got to coach under him, the coach at Gustavus, and then worked with Coach Mickey Haller um, at Gustavus as well. Then um, several others that I coached with there, uh, Dave Slum and um, Mike Boshi, who was coaching at uh, Gustavus at the time. So I'd say they all really impact my philosophy on different things. And uh, we had a, had a tremendous opportunity to work with a lot of really, really good coaches and really good people. So I'm very thankful for that. And, um, to keep trying to find my own style, um, but definitely a lot of those people's um, influence in my background. Excellent. Well, thanks for that, and we'll look forward to talking after this weekend's games. All right. Thanks, Greg.